Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we have Robert Fullington coming to us from the United States of America. Robert served briefly in the U.S. Army before returning to civilian life and in the paint trade. Through a dramatic awakening process, beginning at the age of 28, he came to understand that he is an ET human hybrid. This process accelerated through ongoing interactions with mantis beings called Kekoresh. During that time, he went through an extreme physical change, as well as a radical, spiritual, philosophical, and creative development. He began to receive designs for 2D and 3D images and objects he terms consciousness amplifying technologies, the purpose of which is to help people accelerate their personal growth. Robert feels that the physical changes he underwent allowed him to work with advanced visualization and receive these downloaded designs. In 2015, he shared his experiences with Miguel Medancia and Barbara Lamb in the book, Meet the Hybrids, The Lives and Missions of ET Ambassadors on Earth. In 2016, he joined Barbara and five of the hybrids from the book on stage at the International UFO Congress to share some of his experiences and perspectives He's featured in We Are Disclosure and Being With a Being by Miguel Medancia. He also was featured in the J3 Films documentary called Extraordinary, the seating where through in-depth, harrowing interviews with contactees and frank conversations with ufology experts, Extraordinary, the seating explores alien hybridization programs, why they're happening and their impact on humanity. Robert also appeared in an episode of Ancient Aliens called Project Hybrid, which aired on August, 2000, August 9 of 2019, and UFO Witness on Discovery+. Plus. And I'm proud to announce that J3 Films will be coming out shortly with a new documentary called Extraordinary, the revelation which explores the historical significance of ET presence, as well as, as three specific paradigms, biblical ascension and colonization, and where they will be answering once and for all, do governments know about the existence of ETs? Have they made contact with them? Are they engaged in above black programs? And have they been hiding these facts from the general public for decades? So thank you for coming on, Robert. Oh yeah, thank you for having me. So uh, you've been quite active in the UFO field really with, with all these uh, TV show ups. A little bit, you know, a little bit, but uh, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's came to me, you know, it was, it's throughout from, from when I started having the experiences, um, and I, I started searching out, I was looking for answers, you know, why in God's name am I going through this? And I ended up uh, meeting uh, a good old friend of mine who's now passed away, uh, Cynthia Crawford. And, and she uh, got me into everything and all this stuff just started happening. So, and I always felt like I kind of had, a, I had to, you know, I had to go out and do, I'm really not a good, good with uh, public or uh, being out there, but it's like, God, I just have to do it. I got to tell everybody what, what, you know, what happened to me. So that, cause there's others that's, it's happening to them. So, you know, so it how, how was it liberating for, it. for you getting out there? It was horrifying to be honest with you. <laughs> for me, it was a little horrifying. Uh, cause like I said, I don't like being, I don't like being public. I'm just kind of a quiet, you know, keep to myself kind of guy. And, uh, so yeah, it was a little, it was a little, uh, uh, nerve wracking, but it was like, I could do it. I could do it. And, you know, a little fun. I, gosh, you know, the, the people that I've met and experiences I've had going through doing these things is just, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. Okay. It's great. Um, so I guess you, you coming out might have uh, helped a lot of people too, because uh, now a lot of us do search for confirmation or corroboration to what we've been through and having these stories out there really help. Big time, right? Big time. I know that helped me. Uh, and that's what got me, you know, because uh, it's it's scary, you know. If, uh, I know most most of the experiences are, are lifetime experiences. For me, I have lifetimes worth worth of experience, but um, I don't remember anything until until the two thousand and nine event, and then after after that, it, it was like, oh oh man, and it was really scary. So I was trying to reach out to anybody, and I figured that the best the best were to reach out to are the people that are, you know, talking about these experiences and stuff. So yeah, I just started reaching out to them to hopefully try to find out what was happening to me. Yeah. You know? But it's been, it's, it has been a little liberating getting it out and getting some positive feedback. Uh, Definitely. Pretty good. 
So your uh, encounter started at the age of five. Could you, could you get into that? Yeah. Um, and it actually is kind of a lot, a little bit sooner than that. I used to have uh, strange nightmares as, as a little, little kid of um, just feet, you know, and, oh, that's the weirdest thing ever, but you know, it's just, all I remember just seeing his feet and every time they'd come around, I'd hear this like weird pulsing noise. And I'd start hearing this pulsing noise, like outside while I'm awake as a kid. And I'm like, Oh I'm shit. I'm, oh, I'm going to have that dream now. You know, it's like, I'd hear that and I'd start blacking out. And, you know, I'd, sure enough, I'd have a dream about the feet. And I've had one where, you know, I had where this thing touched me on the shoulder and I woke up and there was a burned handprint on my shoulder, you know, as a kid. <laughs> it's looking at that be like, oh, my God, my dream was real. Yeah. But, you know, of course, everyone hey, it was just an over imagination, Rob. It's just a dream. You're OK, you know. And so, um, uh, yeah, up to up to five. It means weird things like uh, pieces of paper, you know, dragging across the floor. I've had where it was, you know, staying at my grandma's house and you'd hear the closet in the other room open and close, open and close. And you'd hear footsteps. And I always, you know, I always, always thought it was ghost, right? I'm, I'm, as a kid, I'm thinking ghost. I didn't, yeah. just didn't even think extraterrestrials but um uh yeah i can't really remember too much back then because uh you know growing up it's almost like uh, looking back now I, I can see things and it's like oh that's what that was you know that's what that was mm. um because i'm a twinless twin right my uh i have a, an identical twin that didn't survive birth it before me so and I remember as a kid, my mom, we used to watch uh, Unsolved Mysteries, right? And the mystery of the twinless twins came on. She turned it off and she's like, oh, you can't watch that. I'm like, why not? She's like, well, because you're a twinless twin. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, so that whole time I thought everything was ghost related. I thought everything wow. was like my, I thought it was tied into your yeah, I thought it was one. tied into my twin, you know, so I was kind of blaming weird shit like on that. And uh, I was active too. And I remember, you know, waking up at like uh, 13 years old and I'd have a, uh, like on my forearm, there'd be a, a perfect circle bruise, right? I mean, it is perfect circle with a, a, a blood dot right in the center. So it looks like I, something, yeah, like a needle stuck me in and then there'd be a circle like indent. So it's like a suction needle thing. I don't know. And uh I remember like looking at it going, oh, you know, what the heck is that? You know, and it, they're always, the marks are always in the pressure points, you know, they'll be like here or here, you know, or okay. like on the legs or the, behind the calf, you know, and uh, uh, seeing weird stuff, you know, as growing up, like a little, I remember thinking one time as a kid thinking, you know what? My, my aunt was telling me a story how she saw a, uh, a top secret government uh, jet fly through the sky and went really fast and I was like I really want to see that and I remember looking up and thinking I really want to see that sure enough you, I see this little white light in the sky and it just goes whoa I'm like yeah oh yeah I got to see it you know but then I'm thinking oh that's just an experimental plane I got to see it or you know meteorite or whatnot so yeah the and then the fun you know, really didn't start happening. Little odds and ends here and there growing up, you know, odd dreams though. I, but I never made the connection. And then in 2000, late 2008, and then two, the whole year of 2009, 2010, 2011, it was, it was game on. I mean, it was like a, um, I got hit with, with like a sledgehammer. No kidding. It was, it was a complete life destroying and life enlightening experience, you know, so that's where the whole, uh, the person you're talking to now is totally different from the person then, because, you know, I had a whole uh, complete breakdown of my uh, belief structures and all that, you know, totally. Okay, so what happened in 2008, 2009 yeah. to change <laughs> you that much? It's, well, 2000, 2008, so the, the kicker was, um we had some friends you know and they were talking about some government conspiracies at the time i was like 
you know, no kidding. I was like, uh, George W. Bush is awesome. You know, uh, 9-11 was done by terrorists. I, you know, I, I believed every, I was uh, just a person, you know. Uh, there's no way that any, there's ETs don't ex maybe they exist, you know, and I'm on the whole, like, I mean, I, I listened to someone talking about shape-shifting reptiles then. It's like, eh, nah, nah, that's crazy. Now I'm like, yeah, probably so, <laughs> man. You know, I saw this complete change. And um, I, so I had a base, like a little conspiracy theory basis in my life, you know, nothing's just uh, here in passing. This guy, one one day I worked, you know, I was working as a, uh, uh, this, you know, I was like, when, uh, oh my God, I'm trying to think, how old was I? In 2009, I was uh, 29, 29, 29, so I was 29, 28, 29, 2009. Uh, I worked at Home Depot, Home well, let's say, I worked at a uh, hardware store <laughs> and uh, I was a paint specialist. This guy comes up to me out of the blue and he has he has a piece of paper and he's all here i wanted to give i want to give this to you and i was like oh cool i looked at it and i was like it was just a little tiny piece of paper like this it's a little folded up uh post-it note and it had uh some conspiracy things like a ufo video to check out uh a fema camps uh a certain like bill and, and it's just some, just some odds and ends conspiracy theories and i was like oh hey i remember i've i know about a little about this stuff i heard about it before and the guy looks back and just laughs my co-worker says oh do you have another one she's i'll check it out and he had so he's like oh yeah here and then he just walks off that i never like like i don't know something was weird looking back now that's what started it that little that one incident so i'm looking back as like dude that whoever that was you know something was off about the whole situation the fact that he had only two papers like he knew that my coworker was going to ask for one why just a little post-it is it some guys like handing little post-it notes around you know about conspiracies uh i put it in my wallet i forget about it the sick the sickness started i started getting sick right and my sickness started then and at first it was a prostate problem, right? And doctors didn't know what was going on. You know, I've, I did every test. They're like, we don't know what's going on with your prostate. You bankruptcy. Well, that's just a stomach thing. So we had to, um, <clears throat> I had to take off work and stuff. And I just had a boredom. I looked up, started looking up the conspiracies and stuff and UFOs. And I started getting interesting, like, oh, there's some, you know, there's something going on here. You know, there's something not quite right in the world you know uh it wasn't so this was two early 2009 come fourth of july right i had the first craft experience and uh my wife and i were over at my parents house and uh for fourth of july and they have a you know awesome illegal fireworks show you know uh it's california that frowns on big explosives but you know that neighborhood just goes goes ham so fireworks are going off i see a satellite you know up in the sky just looking up and i remember thinking okay 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 if you're something move left move right you know it just keeps on drifting along and i'm like guys look guys check it out a satellite you know i wonder if we're like okay come on put your minds together eh. you know fireworks shows over everyone's gone to bed it's like one two in the morning give or take and uh i smoked cigarettes at the time my wife still smokes and it's like well let's go have our night smoke <clears throat> so uh uh we go out start smoking she starts smoking and i see that satellite like off in the distance right next thing i know that satellite is right over my neighbor's house it's a just a you know disc shaped object you know uh glowing that's just bright like reddish orange glow and when you right when you look at it it shuts off now you can still see the objects there right because there's like a little like i don't know reflective property to it and it's like hovering with us and it's like oh i was like oh did you see that it's like yeah what was that you know and you look away and you st you look away and you start walking right and the the object will start would like pace us and it would just light up just start glowing and then when we look at it it boom it turn off 
the next thing you know we're still like what was that you know it played does this about three times playing with us and next thing it just lights up and just shoots off into space like i mean we're talking like from from the roof of the neighbor's house which is like what uh 40 feet you know yeah. 40 50 feet off the ground and about like uh what's a uh, half a few hundred feet away from us you know so we, it's right there and then just close. into space you know wow. and then it's that little satellite just starts drifting off and then if that was the moment right there where it was like oh oh but it, was, it wasn't quite like that was the moment that sparked the curiosity so it sparks it you know it's like here's a little teaser just poof yeah and uh, i was like what was that right and so i dove in i dove into uh uh researching like what what was it that i just saw because that wasn't from earth you know oh my god i saw uh a ufo you know and it happened like no kidding like a month after i just started looking into it and then there it was boom it's almost like it's almost like they were preparing me for you know what was later to come and it's just just the most hardcore experiences that you know you can even imagine but um yeah yeah <laughs> that's where it starts that's where it starts and then we get into the the year of 2009 uh the prostate thing heals up on its own no explanation and i started getting sick like really sick in my stomach i was 200 and 10 215 pounds and i went down to what 114 you know so i was dying you know you were about to get yeah a doctor was like you know basically gave, said i had a terminal illness and you were about to get a feeding um, yeah i was going to put a feeding tube in me and uh, i was just suffering just hardcore uh, stomach aches and um uh, losing weight couldn't eat i go to barbecues everyone's like wow what's going on with you what's happening and that's when the the crazy stuff really started happening come to fourth july it started in like september october of that year 2009 with waking up with the weird with the weird bruises like my first my first hardcore like memory was uh going to bed and all of a sudden i'm just like aboard a spaceship i'm standing on like a platform i'm wearing my pajamas right this is how i tell that it's not like a dream because you know how often do you dream that you're wearing what you're wearing you got the five senses sight touch taste smell everything's perfectly clear you don't have any abstract uh, um things going on you know it's it's i was standing in my pajamas on a platform inside of some like very dark room and all these little gray guys not like big head grays or regular like a small head uh long arms really wrinkly neck with a small mouth the the, the picture that i drew you know with the being holding the light that's that's a that's them and uh Wow. a black a black like a black jumpsuit they all wear these weird jumpsuits sometimes either they're yeah. naked or they have these the blue jumpsuits or the black like a jumpsuit somewhere weird material that they all seem to wear and uh, uh they just standing around me just staring at me and i'm like i remember looking like why are you staring at me <laughs> but they're just looking there like staring but i like it was almost like oh it's gonna start now oh sh oh dang you know that's the feeling it's gonna start now so um yeah things like that um and then i would have like uh hands down the most intense thing that i can remember right before um right before the big physical i mean the really crazy stuff uh my most hands down intense experience was um uh of that drawing that i did where we were we were inside in because in, all right so we were inside of a motor home inside of a garage right and uh i'm going to bed and i hear something like jiggling the handle in in the garage right 
and you hear like little feet in the in the out in the garage you know this concrete pop, 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 and like things digging it's like whoa i'm like here they come here they come and uh, i'm like oh should i go look nah just go go to sleep nah forget it and uh Next thing I know, the most insane thing that I'm still having a hard time wrapping my mind around was that I came into consciousness as like outside of my body, right? And it was like, I was, I, w- I was a ball of light about the size of a grapefruit. It had this really intense geometric just pattern to it. It was like a, le- like, it, like a big atom the size of a grapefruit with a nucleus, you know, it's like this, uh, like a dodecahedron kind of shape little electrons spinning around so fast it just looks like a glowing ball of light right and i realized that i was inside the being's hands and i'm looking at its face looking around its shoulder and my body was inside of the uh i get strapped into a chair the top portion of my skull cap was removed i can see my a living brain like Most people haven't seen what a living brain looks like, but I mean, I can see all the film, you know, the the veins going through it, you know, in the color of it, living brain. That's the best way I can describe it. And three ETs were rubbing their hands on my brain. And I remember just thinking, was that me? And and the, the being realized that I became awoke at that time, or that I became conscious, like I wasn't supposed to like become aware and he goes oh oh oh, hey hey there uh hey why is a neck why is a giraffe's neck so long well i don't know why it's all because of its vertebrae (laughs) and i I remember just cracking up i'm like oh my god that's the funniest thing i can't believe this creature just uh that was the worst attempt at a joke and as i'm laughing my body you can see it go oh no So I know, and it sounds, this sounds completely insane. And I wake up, I had work at six in the morning, right? And uh, I wake up, I feel like I got hit by a train. Uh, I'm going to work, I feel something on the back of my leg, right? And uh, I was like, what is that on the back of my leg? I look, three perfect bruises, just like when I was a kid on my arm, but now on the back of my leg, but in a, like, a, like this two a bruise here and a bruise here making a perfect triangle right and the blood dots in the center and then a little tiny triangle that was cut and removed out from my skin and i was like oh shit i'm going through some shit right now you know oh my god and uh i just remember like i want to go home i was freaking out i'm like well, i can't just tell my boss i believe i was just abducted by aliens i'm going to take the day off today to reflect and uh, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was the I mean, that was the moment. That was the moment when I realized that oh shit, this has been happening my whole life. So whatever it is that is happening to me now, this has been happening since I was uh, a little guy. Did you ever take a photo? I did, I did, but it was on a. I have, I have, I have the photo of that mark like two or three weeks after because that's when we had the encounter and I had you know I ended up having MUFON come over blah 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 and I was able to take a picture of it after I had a picture of it fresh on a cell phone that's gone now it's, it was like one of those old flip phones you know and I, I snapped a picture of it and I ended up dropping it from like three stories and it smashed and I never got the picture out of the phone <laughs> okay bummer though but i do have a picture of it after like after it was starting to heal and you can still see this circle scar and then the three blood marks and then the triangle healing out okay did Uh, you um like you're on the craft and you knew something was about to happen did you black out did they do a like a medical examination on you yeah yeah it was a medical examination yeah uh ah I ended up doing having that um, uh, regressed 
you know, because I've done hypnosis Barbara Lamb a couple of times. Um, and we did that for the documentary, but that never made the uh, the cut. So there's a whole like uh, film of me going through, uh, but it was, it, it was a medical, I guess the problem, you know, if we're getting into like the, uh, the reasonings why things are happening here and you're getting into like where you get into, um, uh, let's say less grounded kind of, not so much nuts and bolts. It's more of like the spiritual aspect of everything you know, why are we here kind of sort of reason. And uh, from from the, ex what I've learned is it was almost that like they put too much, they put too much juice in the in this body. And so uh, they got to try to uh, balance the spiritual energy with a physical energy. Okay. And going through the awakening is part of why I was sick and everything because of, uh, well, I mean, like I said, you're going from, not knowing anything to just you know <laughs> it's a, a train wreck of an awakening right you can call it do you suspect that your uh let's say your prostate problem might have been due to them taking uh semen from you sure. or? i would say i would say a hundred percent i'd say 95 percent. that's about it yeah yeah because i can't like prove it um without a doubt with, you know with no evidence or anything like that but my my heart tells me yeah yeah, more more than likely. A lot of well. the uh, abductees that do get uh, fan phantom pregnancies, they do. Some of them do tend to, to yeah. have like these uh, women problems down there eventually. Yeah, my wife included just some weird some weird things. Yeah, so and we go like I said, me and her have been through it side by side with each other. Mm. Yeah, thank goodness. So everything that's happening to me, she's you know right there experiencing the whole thing too. Yeah, thank God for them. Jeez, uh, no kidding, right? So, okay, so, if, um, so, okay, what, what happened after that? Because I got a whole bunch of questions, but you know, they're not really like time based related, but uh, yeah, 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 because you know, we're getting it, you get into the uh, the physical side of it, and then what I learned from the experiences, you know. So, at that point, it's I'm starting to wake up, starting to wake up, and it's still kind of like uh, I'm doubting my sanity kind of deal, you know, and then we have the big ship experience here in 2009 uh december of 2009 three days three days before the that event uh i had was having a physical encounter with a being and i'd wake up i'd start walking down the hallway in the house now it was like under complete construction and so it was just you know the sheet rock was ripped out we we're doing a whole remodel <clears throat> and uh in the backyard, there's these French double doors, right? And they go out into a patio in the backyard, a cement patio. And, you know, I walk out there and it was only my wife and he, me, uh, the dogs. The dog would come with me, right? And there was a being that would stand, was standing outside. If you imagine just walking outside for no, with no purpose, just like, oh, I'm just gonna get up and walk into the kitchen for no reason. You know, and there's this like six foot tall, uh, now we're talking like six foot tall, uh, all white skin, naked, you know, uh, hands like this, right? Missing, missing the pinky with three yeah. long fingers, you know, it's like long, you know, fingernail cuticle goes all the way up to like the knuckle here. Uh, and the large head, you know, uh, the picture of the being that I got sent you with it going coming up poking out of the closet it's that that guy that one oh. that guy right which some people would call a um, <clears throat> a tall white zeta is what some people call him but I've I don't, I've never was told, given a name but you know it it kind of goes along with the description of those uh, other people have been giving and it says to me it's all uh you need to let me in and I'm like uh-uh no it's, it's talking it's like a voice inside of your head and it says, you need to let me in. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to let you in, man. No way. And he's like, this is going to happen every night until you let me in. I'm like, all right, well, no, it's not going to happen. And it's just like blackout. I wake up in bed, you know? So it's like, well, what was that? You know, what was that? And uh, it you're, you're thinking, okay, we're just, I'm just dreaming. I'm just dreaming, right? Well, it happens again another night. 
wake up, go down the hallway, and the beings in the back, beings in the backyard, and uh, oh my goodness, I turned it off. Beings in the backyard, and uh, he says, "All right, you're gonna let me in today." And I, all right, all right, I'll let you in, man. So I crack the door open, and I, it puts its hand through the crack of the door, and I freak out and I slam his hand door on his hand and it starts fighting you know and pulls his hand down and it sits down I sit down and it rubs its hand and it's like ah, this is gonna happen every night until you let me in okay blackout boom wake up and the next day the third day uh, was December December 20th 2009 I uh, sorry so it's 2009 uh, December 19 was the night. And then I remember it on the 20th because on the 20th, we had the spaceship encounter. So uh, the third night, I finally let the being in. I open the door. He comes in, faces me and says, are you ready to go? I'm like, oh yeah, let's go, let's do this. Walk outside and there's like this just bright light, you know, up in the sky. And we just, boom, just flash of light and we're up. And uh, he's standing in front of like, I mean, stereotypical Star Trek view screen, but there's nothing else inside that room. It's just nothing and a view screen and the beings um, standing right there. And he says, come here, I wanna show you something. And I go and I look and we're like, you know, 30,000 feet, you know, we're at jumbo jet level above where I live here in the, in the valley. And I'm looking down and I see the northern lights, right? Uh, red, yellow uh, coloration, but on the ground, not in the sky. In these, in, you know how like the northern lights are like ribbons of like energy with like a, that shoot upward, right? Yeah. So it's like that, these ri this ribbons of energy like on the ground. And he said, soon. And I was like, oh shit, like, uh, you're showing me the end of the world and it's going to happen soon. It's like, no, no, no. No, no, that's not what's going to happen. Um, I black out. I later, later, this is another one that I ended up having regressing uh, with Barbara. It was the first experience that I had uh, regressed. And uh, that's all I remember, that part right there. And uh, like just little, little bits and pieces else here, like seeing like a table and stuff but that that would come in after at this point i'm waking up and it's like what the f was that the big spaceship came that night you know i went i went to work you know just like totally like what did i just see what what, what, what what's going on here that's when we had the big spaceship encounter and i mean whew, yeah yeah you know, that's that's something else it was um if you want me to, if you have any questions about that, or if you want me to just go into the well, yeah, uh, coming back to the first UFO, the orange red one, uh, you said it was a saucer, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so a saucer. How big was it? You know, it's a little bigger than a suburban, okay? Yeah, yeah, a little bigger than a suburban, yeah, because uh. You know, the red orange theme tends to come up pretty, uh, pretty much. Uh, I called in and I was dating the, uh, the, the fiance, you know, from, you know, from England that we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. We called in on the second night she was here, a UFO that just flew over our house. Oh, shit. And, but it was a, an orange red orb that could have been like 10 feet wide. And it, it just flew just ever so slightly and glided. Okay. And nobody yeah. in the vicinity saw it except for both of us. Oh, dear. Yeah. And so, you know, I could have thrown a rock at it. Yeah. But, you know, you're in awe. It's so beautiful. It, no, yeah. no sound whatsoever. The week after I'm in the woods, I do a C5 on my own. I call in, I call in the same craft. So I, I went inside like an hour after, go in my, yeah. my dad's house, five minutes, come outside. And as soon as I step off, step off the patio, I get the feeling to look up. Now their house is surrounded yeah. by wood. Okay. So as soon as I, I, I look up, the same craft comes at the same time, right over my head, oh, so just above the tree line, oh, it, geez. it glides away ever yeah. so slightly. No, yeah. no, no, no sound whatsoever. So, but it was orange red. I call it like lollipop orange or something. yeah. 
this the same color as that picture i sent you with the three the three lights uh you know that was a ship yeah. taking off it, yeah it's that same color like orange red yeah it's either orange red or uh blue or just white yeah so yeah. what uh what happened before that because uh, you, you sent me two photos uh, in the woods really uh yeah oh that so that 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 so the, the what i'm telling you the ship now the the big december 20th 2009 ship that's the one with the tree, the blue light and the orange lights right across the street. In that photo, uh, what you're looking at there is a, a giant triangle, probably about the size of a house, right? If you look at it flat like this, right? It's a triangle about the size of a house. When you look at it like that, it, it was thin, you know, just like totally thin. It had it floated on plasma. That's what it looked like. It floated on a line of plasma. So you're seeing a blue line. That's at the back of the triangle, right? Uh, okay, it was moving away. Uh, th it was, this was a 45 minute long encounter, right? So it was doing everything. It got into so close that I could have threw a, uh, yeah, I could have thrown a baseball at it and hit it. No kidding, right? Well, that I mean, so it's like a, uh, again, you know, um, my wife went to go make a phone call. It was like seven o'clock at night, December 20th, right? And so I just had that, you know, experience where, you know, they showed me the thing. So then they sent like a physical ship to show me like, and this is real. And so when my wife goes to make a phone call, the phone's dead. I try to make a phone call. My phone's dead. There's just no phones, no phone calls. All right, let's go outside. Let's go have a smoke, you know, go outside. And there's just this blue light just boom this bar i just there's no sound but you know i'll put the sound effect in there is blue light just boom turns on right and it starts and then another blue light so it's when you're looking at the picture you're only seeing the back engines on it's got two sets in the front and then it's got three sets in the back right and it kind of rotated between a, a small bar with a long bar or it'll just turn off the small bar and you'll only see the long bar so it's it's just floating around doing shit like this you, you know you ever like sit in a room and watch those flies kind of like you know they go fly around in a pattern like this the yeah. ufos it's doing the same thing it's floating around like this and then every once in a while I'll just be like you know and it's like oh god get the camera get the camera get the camera and my wife runs inside grabs the camera you know it's just it's total chaos um every time we go to try to take a picture you know um it the camera battery would go to zero right it's like oh i'm like what are you doing we're fidgeting with it and this thing's just like flying over our head doing the most crazy so we're freaking out it's like oh my god oh my god yeah. uh finally uh my wife you know the, the got a shot off right and when she takes it the camera flashes there was two beings across the street walking towards us. They instantly turned to energy. And so when you're, the orange bits are the beings going, transporting back to the ship. And it's just like, two, two, two wow. red balls go back. Yeah, yeah. The ship stops, does an about face, and then flies over the neighbor's house. And then it starts flashing us with a light. It's like, it, I, at the time, I had a 1985 uh, IROC Camaro, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you just hear, all of a sudden, you hear the metal go. <laughs> like my car was warping, you know? Oh, shit. And uh, my wife's car, you know, here, this is a weird thing. Um, and she, oh, our key battery, the battery was going di dying, so we could never get the car uh, key to work. And uh, I swear, it, the uh, battery has been charged ever since. So like if it was going dead, I had to replace it. And it's never gone dead ever since. So I don't know what's up with that. But uh, it, it's just one of the weird, weird things, a part of this whole thing. So those three lights that were moving, jumping around, and that, you know, the photo you sent me, was that actual ship? Yeah, that's an actual ship. And that happened after this one. Yeah, so that happened after um, when this this one it was um it, it was just mind-blowing i mean i eventually got onto the, the i got a, the phone to work 
I was able to call my parents, right? And I'm like, Mom, Dad, you're not gonna believe what I'm looking at right now. And they're like, go inside. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, oh my God, it's gonna take us. Oh my God, it's, gonna, it's just like flying over our heads. You know, I got to see the whole thing like up close and in your face. And yeah, I wasn't from this world, man. I, I remember thinking, I gotta tell the neighbors. So I run to the neighbor's house. I, I, I see the neighbor washing the dishes, right? And I'm pounding on the door. And it's like, she couldn't, she couldn't see me, you know, uh, or hear me or anything. You know what? I mean, I'm pounding, I'm ringing the doorbell. Ding, dong, ding. She's just la, da, 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 da. like, <laughs> I turn to find out that they're able, they're able to manipulate reality around us. And, you know, they can put us in bubbles. So that way only, uh, you know, they can in intend on who sees what and who doesn't. Frustrating, and, but mind blowing. And so, my mother-in-law came home, came home and uh, the ship takes off, burns, you know, it's overcast sky. It burns a hole a mile in diameter in the overcast. And then you hear, and here comes a, 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 a fighter jet. It's probably, uh, I can't tell my difference between the F-18s, F, F-16s, one of those, you know, F, F models. And uh flies off fully loaded no collision lights you know obviously like at treetop level you know flying goes chasing after the thing right. it's like oh shit so that was the one that was you know i called I, I was like oh my god i called the uh ufo um uh hotline you know report it and i'm like why are you not freaking out right now this just happened you know i I uh, called MUFON. I ended up yeah. getting hold of MUFON, and you know they came over, did a whole investigation and stuff, and it was witnessed by a shitload of people. And yeah, it was a pretty big, uh, it was a pretty big encounter. Yeah. yeah. So that craft just uh, like moved around, give you like a light show of sorts. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it was shooting shooting lights at us. It it um, zapped us with some kind of weird laser, you know, uh, harmless. You know, it didn't nothing that hurt, but. Um, yeah yeah crazy wow. that's amazing crazy. that was the one and after that i mean you see something like that there's no going there's no going back it's like and yeah it's officially it's officially real true um yeah and then, like, so i guess you heard the afterburners uh of the craft yeah, and yeah. of the of the of the jet the going yeah, the going jet. the craft the craft made no sound yeah Every once in a while, you'll hear a hum coming from it, like it was charging up. Like, it'd be like, and then it'd flash. And then there's like this weird, like, gray, a green laser thing that came out. I was like scanning it. Um, crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, crazy light, Joe. But well, yeah. no, barely any sound. Oh, and sometimes, sometimes when it would go from like, yeah, I mean, it's going like a thousand miles an hour one way and then does this like 180 and it's going like 5,000 miles an hour maybe even I mean it's like a boom like that it, it, it would you can hear it like rip the atmosphere apart because wow. it'd be like thunder it'd be like wow it's like whoa <laughs> the fuck was that Dude. oh pardon my French jeez <laughs> but you know yeah oh. still so we, uh, I did a, uh, I was invited to a C5 north of Montreal once, and um, we were with uh, somebody that worked with Bud Hopkins at the time, and uh, a MUFON researcher and whatnot. And uh, we, uh, like, after, we we're getting near, like, 11 o'clock at night, nothing was happening, and, uh, we, like, all of a sudden, I say, it wouldn't be funny if something happened at around 11, 11. So, we, like, we completely forgot it, forget about it, and so we're on top of this sort of the house is on top of a hill. So we sort of see the entire area and at the horizon, like really far away, we see this light, white light coming towards us, totally opposite of the, like the airplane airways, let's say. And within one minute, it was overhead. But the thing, the entire thing we were hearing, hearing afterburners. Oh, yeah. And what we were seeing were three white lights. Yeah. And at the center, a big red light. Yeah. Yeah, and it flew just above over the house where a whole bunch of experiencers and you know abductees, let's say, yeah. and whatnot, were there doing a C five. Yeah, and that, the whole thing lasted a minute, so 
we, we and I checked the clock and it was like 11 12 so 11 11 sort of made sense oh geez oh geez yeah I've seen I've seen uh our our military fighter jets going after UFOs two occasions yeah two okay. occasions so what they when they're when they're this whole disclosure thing to me it's like oh, are you lying you guys know what this is and it's it's way more because if i've seen i'm a i'm just a civilian you know i had a little you know army time in infantry but you know that's neither here nor there it um it um they know yeah they know i've seen i've seen them go after it yeah and then when i look back at my army time i was like you know 18 when i did it and i'm like I can't get into it. But I'm like, I, I think they kind of had an idea something was going on because there are some things that I'm looking back and I'm like, hmm, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, but I'm not allowed to talk about that kind of stuff. It keeps me out of trouble. Yeah. You know? well, well, you are disclosure in a sense too, that, you know, the more you're coming out, at least discussing it, it does help. Oh, in a sense, I hope. But the problem is though, it's, you know, you know, there's still that stigma attached to it, you know, and oh, I lost a lot of friends and family, but good goodness. Thank goodness though, that, um, like I said, I at least got my wife and then so I've had some friends of mine that they have experiences with me. I just uh, blew their minds open too. Yeah. You know, as time's gone on. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. But yeah, now, the whole thing that I was glad coming out is all the new friends I was able to make that, you know, are like me. So, right it's yeah they do become family in a sense big time even more so even more so yeah. you know uh my family my, i love you guys all but uh you know it's they, life-changing so yeah they have no idea uh, yeah no. none whatsoever like you 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 do go through the door but you can't come back uh it's there's no going weird back. yeah there's no going back yeah once you that's the problem and that's the problem with this whole thing you know and then um uh the the next encounter that i had was with the orange picture you know the three lights yeah. right it's actually so there's there's a set in that experience there's one with two lights on the road right yeah yeah the and, car ride. And, yeah and the car ride and then the one jumping around so we were at a hot you know this is after that ship experience i'm on my brain is going on fire it's like i gotta make full-blown contact now so now my goal in life is to how do I engage the contact experience, right? And uh, uh, I remember we were at a hockey game, right? And I'm like, and every time a goal was scored, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, you feel that energy going up. Oh, yeah, you feel that energy. So I was like, what if, like, I was able to, like, hockey goal, and I'm like, a big of light, I'm here. Hey, hey, I'm here. And, uh, you know, goal happens. And, like, I just remember going, like, yeah, all right, all right, all right, here I am, here I am, you know, just, just like, again, trying to figure out, like, how this all works, what's the nature of it. Because I'm still, at that point in time, I, you know, I'm just, I'm in complete fear, right? Just uh, terrified about what's happening. But I'm still like, I need to push it further. Uh, driving home, I get into a little a race on the highway, you know, and I'm like, having fun uh and i get this feeling like i need to go off of the off the path here i need to take the back roads you know and i mean the back going the back roads it goes by my goes by my parents house coincidentally but i'm living on the other side of the valley so to go to go by my parents house is, is isn't uh you know it, it isn't smart at like midnight right I'm driving down the road and this ball of fire flies over the car, right? This is the best way I could describe it, like a ball of fire. Uh, somewhere in my archives, it's maybe I have the video where it's like me going, uh, my wife gets the camera, I go, I'm like, get the camera, get, you know, get what's going on? Was that an airplane? It, it's in the video, it's like, was that an airplane? Was that a meteorite? And then it's like, oh no, it wasn't. And you can see this ball ball of light down at the end. There's like a stop sign at an intersection. The ball of light's hanging down there. And my wife goes and takes some pictures. I'm like, you know, take some pictures, take some pictures. And she snaps it. 
two balls of light like past the car and go around and just like you know overtake us and boom take off this is instant just boom. so she was able to capture the two balls of light going around and back to the, the craft i now looking back now it's almost like i'm i was racing the corvette and uh losing pretty badly and you know it was almost like I as no, well, we at first, but it, it got us, Dan. It uh, uh, it's almost like they were like playing the same game, right? Like, oh yeah, you, you know, you think you think your car is fast, right? You know, and uh, we go down to the stop sign, and I park because this thing's dancing around, right? The only picture we were able to get was the snap, and what you're, so what you're looking at is the this okay. like a, the acorn shaped craft jumping around the car like this, right? No, we have a, a, a mountain peak with some uh, uh, the collision lights up ahead, right? And when a car would come, you see a car coming, the craft would take off to the collision lights, turn off, and you can still see like a tiny little light. You know, so it's like they knew that another car was coming. They'd take off and the car would go and then it'd come back. And then it'd take off again, boom, you know, hang out at the mountain and another car, another couple cars would come and they'd go and it'd come back. And then it went down the road, like, follow me. I remember I'd never felt such terror in really? my life. Yeah. I mean, you know, because think about it, I don't know. At this time, I didn't know better. Now I'd be like, let's do this. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, but back then, oh heck no! I was like, the terror I felt when it's like, this is my like third, you know, hardcore 3D experience, and it's like, and I'm being targeted by extraterrestrials. That's a horrifying feeling to feel at that moment in the middle of the night out in a field. You know, it's just it's just fields. You know, we're out in the middle of like. Uh, lettuce strawberry fields strawberry fields forever man and uh i take off i get in the car i'm like F that's it. get in the car my parents house was one minute away right so this happened like right at my parents house and uh get it get inside the ship starts following us down the road and then when i started turning around you know it, it took off and, uh, I'm pounding on my parents house my dad comes out in his underwear you know he's like what's going on Rob I'm like yeah, blah, 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 you know yeah and uh, they're like I don't see anything Rob and I'm like Fudge. Ah. and I go <laughs> home you know and, damn yeah, my event my adventure started from there because af after then that's when I had my first mantis experience and then after my first mantis experience that's when I got I met you know, I was like, uh, something is happening. I need help. Like, so I started searching out for other contactees. And that's when I started my whole network of friends and new family and stuff after that. Yeah. Wow. But that's the start. You know, that's that's just like the, the nuts and bolts of everything that kind of got me. <laughs> One hell of an appetizer, really. Yeah, 10 wow. years. That was 2009. I was over oh what, 11 12 years ago geez good grief good yeah. grief and uh well yeah i think it's fascinating that you've got the you had this sort of like slowly contact thing happen uh some people get into it really hardcore uh, to me it, it, it it's really these little things that would happen over time plus the fact that there's a lot of paranormal stuff in my family so i guess that really helped yeah. me acclimatize to everything yeah that's so like mine was nothing, nothing. Just, I mean, just oh, you have an overactive imagination, uh, you know, all the way up until 29 years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, see, my I had a, like a full, full uh, like a vision in front of me happen when I was around 25, 26. Then the ET stuff started to happen when I was around 30. Yeah, 30. There it is, right. Yeah. must be something to that number now the uh i had a uh, i at, at first i thought it could have, could have been like a ghost because i didn't know anything about et so i had yeah. this sort of um upside down guitar pick like a, a pear-shaped yeah, yeah, yeah but like a guitar picks like upside down the 
So the, the, the big part of the guard, the guitar pick at the top and it, it was going down. So I thought it was a, uh, like a ghost, but it, like hindsight, it's probably like a, a mantid. So I had like the, the big round oh, yeah. eyes at the top yeah. and the really long face with the mouth yeah. at the bottom, but I didn't see any mouth. I got, I only saw the face and it was hovering over my bed looking at me. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Totally. Yeah. It and, totally is. Right. Ugh. So, you know, but again, these, nothing bad came from of it, but you know, it, it, these things would happen over time. So I guess I got used to it, but yeah. Um, so let me see. Uh, so you, you met Jacqueline Smith on a UFO, according to the book. Yes. Jacqueline Smith and I go way back. Yeah. Way, way, oh, way back. Oh yeah. Yeah. I met her the same time I met, uh, like Barbara. No, I met Jacqueline after everyone, uh, you know, I was getting into the groups and stuff and meeting people and, uh, you know, we'd go out on like contact missions with a big group with the star family group, you know, right. And uh, uh, everyone was just like, Rob, Rob, you got to meet Jacqueline Smith. You got to meet Jacqueline Smith. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to meet Jacqueline Smith. Finally, when I met her, she's the first person ever that I met in, in under these circumstances, right, where we met and like we didn't, we just looked at each other for you know, several, a few minutes, you know, just couldn't, couldn't speak because she was the first person that I met in a ship before I met in person. So being like, I know who you are, but I don't, I don't, under, I don't know or understand how, but I know who you are. And it's like, oh, we met before, obviously, you know, we met on craft before. So yeah, talk about a, uh, uh, a complete, um, I don't know what you'd call that a revelation. Th no revelation, throw your mind for a loop. Yeah, it's a, it's a mind explosion, it's like a nuclear bomb going off, and your head just explodes. It's a head exploding event. That's what I that's what I'll call it. <laughs> so, how did, how did you two meet? Like, what happened? Was, on the so, is it a it was a oh, on the we don't know, we don't know, but I get little glimpses here and there. Um, she had uh, she had an experience once on Thanksgiving uh, where she was gone for like a month. She was gone for like a month and uh, had a, had some a really crazy interactive experience. That Thanksgiving, my wife and I had a craft experience, you know. So it's like we we're kind of like, oh, I bet you that was Jacqueline up there, you know um but as far as on board i think well it's, i think it's because we're on the same program okay you know, we're, we're involved whatever ab, let's call it abduction program because it seems like different species have different programs if you will like for why they're doing and what they're doing you know so i would say it's you know we're we're just a part of the same program and connected to the same species so it does. It does seem like we um, uh, filter each other out, like kind of like clicks in a way, you know. But it's like uh, we tend to gravitate towards the people that are experiencing the same um, beings. It just kind of seems like it happens happens that way naturally. So, how did you like? You saw her for the first time, and you thought, "Oh my God, I know you somehow." Or yeah, yeah. It's like, I know you somehow. Yeah. Um. I had the same feeling when I first seen uh, a, a mantis being, which was shortly after, um, which was shortly after the, uh, you know, with the orange ship bouncing around us. And uh, that's, that's when I met S Cynthia Crawford. I was watching, uh, you know, Project Camelot, right? Has a video out there with, with Cynthia and where she's, you know, showing her statues and stuff, where she makes statues of, you know, extraterrestrial, she made statues of yeah. extraterrestrials. And uh, she brought out the mantis being one. And uh, I remember I paused it and I stared at it for a minute and it's like, why is this so familiar? It's like, why is it so familiar? So that's just kind of the same feeling I had with Jacqueline, like this, there's, and it's in the heart, right? And you get this feeling in your, in your heart of like um, 
it's you know it's like when you when you haven't seen a friend in like 30 years you know and they've grown but you can still recognize them you get that it's a feeling in the heart that you know the person you know you know what i'm saying and it's the same thing so with, the, with seeing the statue it was this heart feeling of i know this thing and i can't explain it but that knowing is like extremely deep i stare i went to her website and i stared at that for like a, a while and when i was i went to go to bed and i hear this strong voice it's like uh i don't like that very much I'm like oh what what don't i like and i had a hatchet you know next to the bed and it's like i don't like that very much you know i'm like okay i don't like my hatchet for some reason you know and so i picked the hatchet up i put it in the dresser and it's like i still don't like it very much but it's cold i'm not going to make you go outside and i was like oh no i'm going to get visited tonight aren't i and uh, i was like well don't don't wake my wife up because you're gonna freak her out you know i i go to bed i wake up i i, I wake up out of bed and uh, it's there's this like a night light was on it was like this glowing orange like gold light and at the foot of my bed was about a six and a half foot tall uh, mantis being, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, not, not like a exoskeleton, you know, it's got, it's got skin. It's just, it looks like a, 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 a praying mantis, you know, it's got fingers, you know, the same guy, like three long fingers that go all the way down to the forearm. Wow. Right. Yeah. And then these just massive forearms. Right. But this really like elastic wrinkly looking skin you know and then i remember looking down and you can see its belly it's got like i just remember the fat rolls on it you know it's got mm -hmm. a little tiny you know like a person just little jelly little jelly rolls on them you oh. know and uh goose bumps on you know this bumpy skin and uh the long long neck with the you know mantis shaped head the big buggy eyes and uh I remember just like seeing this thing and it bows to me, right? It just, it's, it bows. And I'm like, why are you bow? Why is this? I'm like in such awe. I'm like, why are you bowing to me? Like, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm like, don't bow to me, man. You know? And uh, wow. all of a sudden this just like something clicked. And when I saw it and I started cracking up, I couldn't help but just outburst in laughter. Because it was like at that moment, I was like, oh my God, I'm reuniting with something that I'm uh, intimately connected to. It's not just like, it's not just like, oh, uh, I've seen this before. No, no, no. There's, there's an intimate connection like of like reunion. And it puts its, it puts its hand out and it touched me on the, on the forehead. I'm just like, ah, ha, 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 hey, blackout. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so and that's when that's when i i text message i sent an email to cynthia oh, what's happening to me oh my god what was that thing it was the most beautiful thing ever yeah how tall was it i about six five yeah okay well, six, six feet to six five maybe seven was, to, yeah not so tall then okay. average height you yeah. know wow. yeah <laughs> did you get a sense of name did no you? No, uh, no no name or anything like that and just uh mantis you know this is a soul connection you know now would you like feel what type of gender they have according to their energy because i had this sort of experience that like a gray uh appeared to me like in a, a possible like weird vision dream because i i was like in huge like stomach pains i had gulp oh. bladder problems and what yeah. i felt but from the gray was like it was female because of the energy yeah oh. I, I'm always with all of mine. It seems more masculine okay. uh, with me, but I do feel that you're right, fit, f masculine, which is more neutral than with people. But there is that like a masculine energy to okay. it a little bit. Yeah, I felt like motherly love, caring type of thing, and it, it felt like okay, she's a female. That's it. I, I did. Ah. I, I couldn't understand why. So oh, crazy. Yeah, mine's always been like uh, I couldn't. I can't really say motherly because. I asked this question before and it was like uh, mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, aunt. So it's like, it, it was more of a representation of everything. Wow. Yeah. 
Uh, but still with the individual, it, it, as a whole, it's every, it feels like everything, but as an individual, it's, uh, there definitely was a masculine, you know, feel to them. So did you see that, uh, mantid more often after that? Oh yeah. Quite often. Yeah. Quite often. And that's when kind of like a, after those original sets of encounters, that's kind of like when the schooling started, if you will. Yeah. Like, uh, you have the education period, learning about like nature of reality, I guess you can say. And where did those episodes of uh, training happen? Anywhere I was. Yeah. Okay. Anywhere. So you get downloads then? Yeah, you can say downloads. <coughs> downloads. Uh, um, uh, aha. The, uh, we call them, I like to call them the aha moments. Which I know that other contactees too like to call them the aha moments, you know, where you're just, just thinking, you know, just constant thinking stream. I'm always trying to just figure out the the mechanics to everything and how how everything's working so it's thinking and then you got this um trying not to sound too crazy but it it's it's the um it's like the the, the extra it's like an extra mind that's with you and then kind of feeding you ideas as you're going and it's uh giving you pictures you know so as you're thinking it's almost like like a student having a conversation with the professor and the professor's going, well, well, think about this now and think about this. Yeah. So for me, it's never, they've never really given, given me uh, uh, exact. It's more like think this, this way, you know, start thinking this way. So they're really more point and have me think a, a certain way, kind of like a encouraging thoughts. How did the, uh, the word Kekoresh came to you? Kekoresh, that's from Cynthia. Yeah, Cynthia. We call, um, we call them as the Kekoresh. But it, and I, I ask, and it's almost like click, 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 click. That's all I mean. Okay. <laughs> so the Kekoresh, yeah. So it would be like, okay. if I can't even do it, it like, so, yeah. So that's yeah. how they sound when they speak? Yeah, like click, clicks. Click, click, clicks, yeah. Click, clicks, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I've, a few times I've had it where, you know, being a group of people, and we're doing like a CE5 and you hear their footsteps, you know, in the bushes and you hear that. You know, like, yeah, all around. You hear them all around you. You're like, oh my God, it's around. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so, you know, cool. Uh, so cool. So cool. Yeah. So, did, uh, so what happened when the, uh, you know, for the second time that the, uh, that the mantid, mantid came to you? Um, you know, um you know, so, you know, I was talking about that tree experience, right? Where like, you know, so if we go back and we go, we go back in time, um, I'm still dying from an unknown disease at this time, right? Like the whole time, just I'm, I'm on my way out. And it was about this time, it was about this time in the experiences when it was, the doctor was saying, you're going to die, right? And I'm like going, well, it's obviously it's ETs that are causing this, right? And then when the when I started having the more and more encounters with the man's being gone, perfectly healthy. And then now I'm like, you know, I'm back to 208 pounds now, you know, I'm a fat boy again and um, somewhat healthy. You know, I got a little gut problem popping up again, which is weird because then again, I'm going through a, a weird stomach problem uh doctors can't figure out what's going on and they're coming back around again it seems like so it's like yeah, another round uh, uh yeah. here it comes again you get that where you know it goes away for for like months maybe a year and then all of a sudden it's like yeah we're back <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah when the, the camera on the, the camera around it started coming more that's when the healing happened complete complete healing yeah okay and just no explanation of why why i got healed just but one day i was bad and suffered and then the next day it was gone and i started a, Put on weight starting put, yeah, putting on weight that's when we got married and i started putting on weight getting healthy and i started learning more and they started coming around more and kind of uh wow. uh teaching on yeah how the universe you know <sighs> kind of works uh, according to the book, you said that there's a you had an implant under the tongue at the age of five. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I still have them. They're they're right here, right it behind the jawbone under the tongue. Okay. And I remember uh, we were just learning about uh, childhood cancer in school, right? And we just learned that it was like this kid had had cancer. He wrote a childhood book about surviving cancer. And he remembers saying he felt little bumps inside of his mouth. And then that was cancer. Uh-huh. And I remember at five years old, right? Five years old, I heard that. And I wake up one day and I feel these, I mean, they're tiny, but when you're five in, in your mouth, you know, something like the size of a grain of rice feels like a boulder, right? And I remember freaking out. Oh my God, mom, I got mom, there's bumps in my mouth. I got cancer, you know? <laughs> so my mom's all honey everybody has bums in your in their mouths you don't have cancer i'm like look it's cancer you know they're there you know they're there yeah they they're magnetic at times which is which is kind of weird sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't but they're they're there and my dentist is like i don't know what those are you know so okay uh yeah they've just been in my life forever forever. how did you know that they were magnetic did you try to use that sort of scanner No, no, no. So, you know, as older, you know, after going through all this stuff, you know, I'm trying to figure out what that is. And I putting magnets in my, in my mouth, you know, <laughs> yeah. as everyone, it'd be like, click, you know, and, oh, it clicked, <laughs> and then, you know, so like a little piece of metal, but then it won't be, it's non-metallic because it doesn't come up on uh, x-rays or anything like that. So it's a non-metallic, it doesn't em- emit any radio or anything like that no way am i going to get them taken out i mean i know like people be like you should get them taken out and exam i'm like look i didn't put them there so they're there for a specific reason right, it's yeah. not uh, and i'm going through some pretty awesome stuff although albeit horrifying at times uh i don't want to like i don't want to have to one have them get put in there again and two i mean who god knows what they're there for yeah you know, okay. they, don't, they haven't bugged me or anything like that. Every once in a while, they'll they'll pop out and start spinning. If you ever imagine a little grain of rice popping out and like rotating around inside of your mouth, it's totally creepy. Yeah. So another telltale sign that you've been uh, that something's been happening to you was that the you got between the age of 13 and 16, you you'd wake up with the uh, odd marks and but you know the blood spots on pillow. The blood spots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would have like a lot of the blue, of course, then the marks, you yeah, know, yeah, a little bruising good. and stuff. But, you know, back then I'm, I'm just like, uh, you know, I was into martial arts a lot. I, I raced, uh, raced around on motorcycles and stuff uh, pretty aggressively, you know, water sports and whatnot. So I was a really active uh, in the sports. So I always just kind of, you know, put it off as like, a, okay, they're, they're nothing, but there's geometric aspects to them you know as a kid you don't you don't look at a wound and be like oh that, that has a perfect geometric <laughs> shape to it that's True. odd you know uh now i do i'm like why is that in the shape of a of a you know of a, a tetrahedron you know or or a triangle or some stuff like that. and then looking back yeah they're, ge- they're geometric shapes to them yeah so um yeah you you, you talked about the fact that you're double jointed Oh yeah, Bar- Barbara. Barbara gets a kick out of this, you know. Every, every time we were hanging out with a group, Barbara be like, "Rob, do the thing with your do the thing right with your wrist, right?" Mm-hmm. So I mean, oh. I mean, all the way, you know. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> so, yeah, like so, a mantid, really. Yeah, just like a just like them, you know. They they do that too. I mean, their their hands. Their hands are, yeah. I can do it almost uh, without the effort, but if I was to push it, you know, I can ah. go. Oh, I can go I all the way. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> I call them my little reminders, you know, because uh, I, I, I nicknames and stuff as the mantis, you know, when I was younger, you never really, I never made the connection, you know, but it's always been there. You know, that, that's where, that's where the hybrid uh, theory kind of came from because uh, um, trying to figure out what 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 is this why am i going through it and nobody else is you know why yeah you know trying to find out the why so when i'm trying to when i got into the whys of it throw away your textbooks 
throw away uh, uh, your your religious text, throw away everything you you think you know about anything. But why is it happening? Yeah, and that's where the hybridized uh, aspect kind of came in and kind of goes into like the twinless twin. I'm sure we've heard this before, where like there's there's two fetuses and in, usually involved with it and um so is that is that the reason why you think you're a hybrid is there the have you been uh, told i was told um i believe it uh to be fact because of other people i've interacted with that uh, with that i you know I, I can't talk about but i've had some experiences with some people and it's like well that's the only explanation you know it mean, really it's the only yeah. explanation and i know i can't come up with like i know be the whole uh, blood test thing or anything like that and it's like well what if the entire human race was a hybrid species sure. you know you've, you know and then and then you have uh linda malton howe said this once because you know I, I asked her uh you know the question about hybrids on earth and, and she had the the best answer why uh you couldn't prove it and that's because we have nothing to compare it to oh, yeah. it's just like how can you prove because technically it doesn't exist so how can i prove uh that that uh, my blood would match to something that doesn't exist you know true yeah yeah you know, it'll come up as what junk dna junk, which yeah. is how much what percentage is considered junk dna and on top of that if you go with the ancestries you know we all have that little bit of unknown you know that tiny little portion of unknown origin it's not like uh 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 it's almost like there's two there's two hybridized um things going on here there's the dr jacobs i call it the dr jacobs versus the uh, barbara lamb uh, uh paradox right yeah. where the dr jacobs is like they're creating a race of beings out in space to so that they can come and and have the planet or, you know, if i was to play devil's advocate i'm like why is everybody freaking out look at what we're doing in the planet like <laughs> you think maybe maybe they can do better yeah <laughs> but, but you go oh god don't. you know <laughs> no 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 i'm not a great trying to take over the world or trying to convince people that crazy are good but um i'm not a part of that uh thing the one that uh, it seems that i'm a part of is more of a uh, a tweaking in order for specific consciousnesses to come in you know which you know like i said we're getting into the um uh well it cliff as cliff high would say the world of woo you know so we're getting to more of a woo um spiritual aspect of the whole phenomenon which have you ever um like seen like yeah like cloning chambers or anything on a, on a craft yeah. or yeah yeah, I've seen cloning chambers. Um, uh, this would be more in lines with like uh, the Nordic type of being, you know. Uh, Nordic uh, looks like a Pleiadian, but it's actually like a what people would call a Pleiadian, but actually it's a it's a holographic image being placed over a reptilian type of entity. Okay. And uh, I got a whole tour of like a it seemed like an underground facility it was almost like they wanted me to be uh, an ambassador for them and it's like i was getting a uh, a job opportunity so they were like i was getting a tour of the facility and uh, i didn't like it one bit i was like i'm out i'm out and um this this uh, this has been like kind of like i've been trying to warn people about this it's like nothing you have to worry about. Just something that I suggest people being aware of. And it was like, I'm, I'm getting a tour of this facility. It seemed underground. I have a liaison with me and he was the tall, good looking dude, you know, blonde hair, the blue jumpsuit with the insignia. And he called himself the Galactic Federation of Light. Oh, yeah. Right. And I'm like, cool, cool. Check it out. And other beings are walking by like him. And I remember getting this, they'd look at me weird. I had this uneasy feeling in my stomach. And I remember looking at one and I see this like a digital distortion. You know, like 
when when the bandwidth is trying to catch up and you get that digital like distortion well behind that was a reptilian and it was like a, had a little bit of a snout on them um you know uh kind of like ridges on the head brown uh glowing yellow eyes right with a slit in it and i was like whoa what the, what was that you know what was the deal with that and they're like okay well, look we'll come into this there's room and there's like these computers looking things on the wall kind of like kind of like a james bond bad guy lair with like the computers like along the the walls you know with like people at the different stations you know and there was like this crazy geometric like chamber and there's like this is the uh, um the learning chambers and uh you know where have we heard this before but ascension chamber and this is your learning chamber where you're gonna go you'd go in you are downloaded the uh, uh, uh secrets of the universe i'm like and i'm not going into that it's super cool it, and then we go along and there's these corridors that go down and then lining the corridors were these glass tubes right and there's these beings that look like the being that was at my back door right and uh, uh they said these here's our cloning chambers and i remember like mm, just this doesn't something doesn't feel right here so that I got to see the cloning chambers there, but it wasn't like people inside of them. It was like rows and rows of these like ET looking things. And then we go into another room and uh, they say, this is, these are the controllers. And they're like these computers lined up against the wall. And it had this like little being plugged into them, kind of like in the movie, The Matrix in a sense where everyone's all plugged in, but these are these little like atrophied, like they've been there for a long time, right? And they say, these are the controllers. This is where all your channeled messages come from. And I'm like, we, I'm like, none of this sounds good, you know? And at that moment, I'm like, I'm out, I'm out. I'm like, I don't want any part of this. And uh, um, poof, you know, I was black out, and woke up, but it was like, you know, after then, and I forgive me for the people out there listening that you know do all the channeling with the Archangel Michael's and uh, Ashtar Command. These are the names that these beings use to to channel. If you ever notice that, you know, um, it's kind of died down a bit, but there was this peak of it, you know, and it was like, well, this event's going to happen. They were never right. They were never, ever, ever on point. But they would give you like really good information like uh, about spirituality and stuff. And so there's like truth in it. But then like there was these other things and I was like, ah, yeah. And I can feel it on people. Ever since I did that, I can feel on people that are like into that, you know? So it was just definitely the more negative aspect of, of, uh, of it out there. Um, I know there's a big debate on negative versus positive abilities, but if you just, you know, look at the Hubble deep field view, right? And look at the size of our universe to just believe that there's a singular paradigm out there that it's either positive or it's negative. No, it's everything, guys. It's everything. It's positive. It's negative. It's, it's, it's just like here on Earth, but it's, it's out there, you know? So it's did the, you see them, like, use, uh, like, certain technologies or uh, artifacts of sorts? Uh. Uh, yeah, there was no, if we were to go back, if we were to go back into the experience where, you know, um, they showed me the Northern lights in the sky, right? As I, this, if I have, so this would be regressed memory, right? Um, which if you've never done a regression before, you know, it's, it's clear, it plays out like a movie. Uh, the only, you know, and I got, I got Barbara Lamb doing it, you know, which is like, uh, she's a friend of mine and uh, totally professional, but you got to be careful because I can see how you can get um, implanted. So it's almost like the person doing the hypnosis can, can control the narrative a little bit, 
So, and then your own imagination can make things up uh, in some cases. So, you know, um, I don't like using the, the uh, hypnotherapy is, it, I mean, it works, it gets you there, but uh, I don't like calling it as like the evidence experience, you know, cause I'm not consciously aware of, <laughs> I have a hard time just <laughs> explaining that, but you know what I mean? Uh, for for the skeptics out there, you know, I I tend to not use it as a the um, full experience. But what I remember in the regression was um, uh, being pulled back, and um, now here's the trippy part. <laughs> this is the trippy part. I've been talking about this for ten years, right? Ten years. And uh, I had this regression happen, um, yeah, ten over ten years ago now, right? And uh, they show me where it was like a table, right? This mantis being comes in to the room, and there's this like mushroom table, right? And um, it's like a black crystal, like perfect glass black obsidian kind of crystal, with this copper beam going around the um, the table and the being would like tap it and you would see where it tapped you'd see this ripples right the crystal would turn to liquid and you'd hear harmonic tones and be like boom, 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 right and a perfect hologram of our solar system comes up right i mean like the sun comes up and you see the little arches coming off of you know of it you know and the little prominences prominences you know the solar flares and uh you can you zoom out and you can it zooms out and you can see like just the perfect a picture perfect hologram of the planets and remember they're like hey, hey pay attention you know the you know, what you're looking at the technology is not important what's important is what we're going to show you and so they zoom out and it's and it shows me they show me this like comet like rock right and, and i'm like going oh my god you're showing me that the world's going to be hit by a comet. They're like, calm down, calm down. It's not what we're showing you, man. It's no kidding. They tell me that a rock was going to come into our solar system, right? That rock was going to go around the sun and it was going to come around to the earth and it was going to float out into space. Our scientists will see it. They would say, oh, I'm getting chills thinking about it. <clears throat> they would, the, the scientists will say, that uh, it's interesting. This rock is interesting. It's unique, but there's nothing really special to see here. It just kind of goes and floats on, and we're just unaware of what it really was. No kidding. It blows my mind. I'm recorded saying this like, uh, you know, over 10 years ago. And, and what happens? A mua mua comes around. Oh my God. And uh, well, so they explained to me what it what that was at the time when they were explaining to me this rock. So I've been waiting for years for this rock. I'm like, I'm waiting for this rock to come. That's going to be special, but not special because it signified it was a, for me, it was a marker in time for the, what they explained later, which was coming. And they said, what, what happened was about 25, 25, 26,000 years ago, uh, the, black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy uh, burped, right? Like, uh, so to speak, a burp. And because an object fell into it, this is a, a, a gas cloud of some sorts fell into the black hole and it caused it to have this eruption. And so it takes, you know, 25,000, uh, about 25,000 years for this wave of energy to uh, hit the planet just as we're like you know because the sun's traveling through the galaxy you know it, it kind of bobs up and down but you know it's more spirals like this uh into the through the galaxy and then we're going around it so it just happens like as the sun and the uh, the sun and earth line up with the with the central galaxy it just goes it goes actually it does this boop and then here comes the wave just as we're like lined up with it this is almost like you couldn't this divinely timed kind of kind of ordeal, right? And so they said, "What it is is if um, the object is a is a is a ship, but it's uh, their craft travel through dimensions, right? In order for 
uh, what it was sent for to work, it had to be a physical. So they sent these things out billions of years ago, you know, and it's been floating around for billions of years. Well, I guess what it was is um, it, it's it's kind of I'm trying to think. It's like a describe the picture, like a big surfer being towed in by a jet ski, right? So this object has all these um, energetic signatures attached to different star systems um, and to the galactic core, right? And it says it's like an energetic uh, tap and it connects like portals around. As it comes around the sun, it connects all the portals to our star system. And then it comes by the earth and connects the portals from the sun to the earth to all the other star systems. Because remember the wave is, uh, 25,000 years uh, you know timing so by the time they time this little rock to come in just as other the wave is is about like right here you know uh, because the other star systems already went through the, the pulse so it's almost like um, energetically um, kind of helping the planet and the sun calibrate to uh, the energy and they sent it out because uh, it doesn't really work if if it's going through dimensions it's it's got to go the long haul because of, of physical physics versus uh uh, uh trans-dimensional physics so uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't do it right unless they sent it on a long journey it's not allowed to like jump through dimensions just on a on a perfectly timed out trajectory you know and so it goes by adjust as the wave hits uh it doesn't necessarily affect the earth too much but it it's like ringing a bell on, on the planet a bit but it's more the sun it hits the sun the sun just boom you know I'm sure a lot of people have heard the uh, micro nova term right it makes the sun do um like a like a micro nova or some sort as the point when the earth is uh, magnetic shields are kind of down and supposedly we're on a on a path to a um, magnetic flip of the poles and just at that time we're just hit with a microbe just burst boom and uh, well the future's gonna be bright <laughs> <laughs> a bit a bit yeah. a bit and you know you're seeing it now you know you can look back and our scientists are you know seeing the gas cloud going in you know the weird flashes from galactic center and they're like why is the galactic center flashing yeah that's it you know okay. it's because of this uh burp that's uh coming to us and that's why the whole like et thing's ramping up because it's like we're about to go through uh uh some some crazy ass adventure uh as a species and uh yeah you think it's gonna happen during our lifetime i would say definitely in our lifetime oh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, most definitely. I don't know when. I don't know. I have no idea when. Uh, I don't even think they know really when, but it's just like at some point in time. Yeah. Are you aware if any other family members might have gone through the same thing as you? Um, yeah. Um, a couple odds and odd things here. Um, my my granny had a couple uh things and she said that you know one day there was like a pillar of golden light in the room you know and just this bright pillar of golden light she woke up and i was like uh you know because my granddad passed and, and uh she was like you know bill is that you and the light just disappears and she has overwhelming like warm feeling um was Bill but, her husband? Yeah, yeah, that's my grandpa. Yeah, okay. Bill. But he, uh, they, my family was always kind of, kind of shut off, you know, um, from it. They, they didn't. It's almost like when I was younger, they're kind of like me, having odd odds and ends things. Like I, my dad would tell me about a dream, you know, and I'd be like, oh my god, dad. You're like you know that was probably real you know because <laughs> he's like you know he dreams like where he woke up he's like i woke up and uh 
all these little guys kept chasing me around the house. These little these little aliens with big heads are chasing me around the house. And I'm like, go, shoo, shoo, go away. And they kept like following me around. And then I have a friend, you know, like a couple of weeks later, be like, Rob, I had this dream. These little guys chasing me around the house. And, you know, it's like, you know, so it's, that's, that's as good as they're going to get, you know, they're going to, they can't see it, you know, uh, um, it's a shaman paradox. If you're familiar with the shaman paradox, you know their brains can't can't uh, register that it's that it's real, and so kind of like um, they're they're not able to see the things that are like right in front of them, which I understand because I I I went through this myself when I was younger, you know, thinking that oh that's just a military plane. I mean, uh, my mother-in-law saw the the one ship and she was like oh that was a drone. I'm like a drone, no, no because the military test uh, super advanced things on citizens and zap them with lasers here on drone. Gotcha. Yeah. But they can't, they can't see it. You know, I've seen UFOs before. There's like these crazy lights in the sky and this out in, um, uh, gosh, Laughlin, Nevada, you know, out in the desert and you see these lights in the sky, you know, like with tracers zooming around and my wife and I are like, Oh my God, you see, you see what's going on here. And, uh, this guy comes up and he's like, what are you looking at? You know, just obliterated drunk, you know? And we're like, we're looking at the light. See the lights in the sky? He's like, oh yeah, the seagulls? We're like, seagulls? And the seagulls? That's amazing. No, they're not seagulls. And then we were having dinner with her aunt and uncle and her aunt and uncle come out. And we're like, do you guys, do you guys see the lights in the sky? And they're looking, they're like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I don't see lights in the sky. Or like, how do you not see the lights in the sky? <laughs> or like even, even on my picture, the picture with the blue light, I've shown that to people and they don't see the blue light. I've, well, even the picture, I'm like, do you see the blue light right there? They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. No, that's, there's nothing there. So it's, it's weird. It's weird, you know? I got in big trouble trying to tell everybody. I'm going to work and I'm like, you're not going to believe what I saw. Oh my God. And they're like, what are you? You're crazy, Rob. And I'm like, oh my God, we got a problem here. You know, we got a, we got such a big problem. It's like, well, that's real. What else is real? And then what's not real? Do you talk about the whole, like, uh, uh, this whole world's got a problem. Yeah. I've heard a story once, I think a family of uh, like, I think like two adults and children, they, they, they saw this UFO and if you, you, I got, you know, the UFO was above ground, but I think they were seeing actually like, you know, ETs coming, like looking through the window and what the father described was looking at a restaurant in the air. It's no, oh, no, that's wow. not a UFO. That's a restaurant. Uh, yeah. So that, that comes back yeah. to your story really they can't something you know, it's like clicks or whatever yeah it's like the it's like the it's like you're seeing something that doesn't exist so the brain's trying to uh uh put images what's that i can't remember the name of the thing where you see faces in the sky yeah you, in the clouds there's a, yeah. there's a word for that right a yeah. psychological term yeah. so i'm wondering yeah. is that is it the same thing so it's like a part of your brain because you can't see UFO, but you know restaurant. So it puts the image of a restaurant for you up there. And I wonder if a lot of times in the abduction scenario, you hear about the screen memories and stuff sure. too, you know? Yeah. I wonder if that's just the brain not understanding what it's, uh, it's yeah. uh, looking at. Yeah. No. Uh, it's like they told me before too, they like, Rob, you know, you know the future, right? You know the future, you know, you know how it's, what's going to happen, but you don't understand the future. And because you don't understand it, you're not going to be able to figure out how how you get to that point or when it's going to come because you don't uh, understand. So the same the same thing, yeah. You know, they just don't. A lot of the times, we're having an experience if we don't under because it doesn't exist. We don't understand it. The brain does wonderful things, you know. Uh, it also also trauma too. You got to remember too. This is, you know, it's traumatizing. So. What our brain does amazing things when it comes to uh, trauma, you know, uh, blackouts and all this other, um, you know, replacing memories and whatnot, all on its own. Yeah. Um, coming back to the mantids you saw, uh, did, 
were you aware if they were wearing anything like robes capes jewelry <laughs> my guys are always naked yeah <laughs> always naked i've yet to see one with a robe i know like like jacqueline i know she's seen them with, on, with robes before for me always naked always yeah and the in the the white zs2 always naked yeah yeah <laughs> Because uh, yeah, I'm always coming back to Simon Parks and uh, his uh, mantids and uh, and oh, his yeah. drawings. They do have robes on. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and uh, uh, I've got. I never got a chance to talk to Simon. That'd be cool if I did. He'd be he'd be a good one. But he describes them similar. You know, it's not an exoskeleton. It's you know, I've heard him say with the skin on before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've skyped with him twice. I think in 2014. Oh, awesome. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, also, uh, let's talk about the 2D images you sent me. Oh, yes. Yeah. So at, a, at one period of, um, uh, I don't have my phone on me. At one period in time, I was, uh, I would get into like a, um, um, a, like a trance almost. Right. And I'd be like, I got to get this out. You know, and I'd start, uh, it happened, it happened after I saw, was sent that blue picture of the, of the, um, the chair, you know, so my, my oh, mentor. Yeah. yeah, we need to talk about that too. Yeah, my mentor sent it to me and she's like, Rob, check this out. And I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, I'm staring at it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> She never told me the story behind it before she passed away. So I never got the whole story except for, Rob, check this out. This is the inside of a, a, a plasma ship for a mantis being. And what you're looking at, it's like if I, w if I was on the dashboard of a car staring at the, the driver's seat looking at me. So you're looking at the seat and what's behind the seat, right? And the white little squares, they're actually coming out from the ship and they come out and they go, if the being was, and I'm the being sitting in the chair, the, the, these little white, white squares will go into their head and uh, that integrates their consciousness with the ship. So when, when they're flying, you know, the ship, they were, this is like, we're talking like, I don't know, a billion years more advanced than us. You know, this is like, yeah, we're, we're like god realm of technology you know they uh, become the ship right so it'd be like you're you're superman with no uh attaches to attachments to uh physical laws you know and you are the ship i mean with all of these psychic abilities and everything you know you want to be you want to be a cloud you're a cloud uh, floating around you want to be a, a, a nuclear weapon and just wipe everything clean but you can be that too so you know that's probably why we're, we're probably not allowed to have this yeah. kind of technology you know yeah now some of us are trigger happy yeah yeah i'd go right to the bank man <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah no uh so anyways that so I'm, he sends me the, that picture, right? And if you notice on the back bar there, I stared at the symbols and it just like went, triggered something in me. Uh, yeah, it just triggered something. And it just started like, uh, uh, if I had my thing, I'd take, go out and could I had a little, I found, just found a little piece of paper, you know, it was on the back of, a, uh, of an envelope for an old, you know, uh, power bill. And I just started like doing the symbols out is like, well, wow, that's, you know, I have no idea what it means. It just, it's like a feeling that needed to get out. So I started, that's what I, that's what I did those for. Um, the first one, it was kind of choppy at first. Uh, but then I was like, it was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, let's, let's do more of that. So I tried to like, uh, do it more and more and try to hone in like figure out what I'm doing here um, uh, the the one it, one of the images it's the one uh, it's like a circle with with uh, some other circles and then it's got the 
tetrahedron on it with like some symbols of like a triangle and then okay. another triangle right yeah, yeah okay so when it came to that my see my goal in life at this point was point was trying to um, uh, activate contact in higher consciousness so i was creating a meditation tool right and so i just focused on okay i'm going to use whatever was just triggered in me to to do this i'm going to try to if i can adapt this um to advancing consciousness for myself and others right and so what it is it's uh i wanted to like a portal for create a portal for the mind right and so what you do is i did it with all black and white so you, you turn off all your lights in a dark room and you have your screen on Right? And you want to stare at the, at the center of it without moving your eyes until the image has been burned onto your retinas, right? Then you once the image has been burned onto your retinas and you close your eyes and then you can see the image inside of your mind's eye. And mm -hmm. there you go, a portal. You know, so you just, we want to try to focus in. So it's like a, a practice, you know, and it's, you might have two symbols right because on um, the two separate eyes but if you learn how to use your mind and you exercise your mind you bring the two images into focus and then you um, have that burned image and you try to focus it and you keep it in perfect alignment so and then what you want to do is once you have it in line you imagine trying to travel through through it so i had a couple of people do it and they're just like you know totally just went catatonic on me a couple of times and it's like whoa you know come back and like what what, what the heck you know so that's like where the two-dimensional things i was just trying to create something after being triggered to help advance uh, uh, myself and others you know you sent me a really nice photo of uh, what looks like a female hybrid uh he's naked oh yes so that one my wife and i we call that one the the galactic the galactic mother and uh she came once to to like in a this is a total dream state because now you know in, in, with her you're stepping away from uh um uh, more physical beings and you're going like full-blown like just energetic being and it's the form that she chose to show me you know in a dream telling me that i had to help my help my wife out um and then she would come to my wife uh, from time to time yeah and i did that image i did because uh, uh i was actually taking pictures of a um, uh, solar eclipse back in the day back in 2012 that partial solar eclipse we had here and uh, i was taking pictures of it and, and this crazy purple um you know image of like this purple fairy with like a smiley face on it it was totally uh you know not a being but i took that and so i used that photo and i blended the the that color from the eclipse to make the image so when you see the color and everything that's actually uh, a crazy image from an eclipse that i turned into the image of the uh, energetic being that told me to help my wife okay yeah. wow yeah because now the at that point they just they choose forms they're like that was in your head so this is the way we came to you kind of deal yeah so how did you get involved with ancient aliens so that's when uh with barbara lamb right so like years ago years ago we uh uh when i was just like meeting with cynthia crawford and we were going to have this like a gathering you know we we're going to have a we're gonna have a party star we're gonna have a star family party right with like just amazing just amazing people you know all all uh you know hybrid um contactees abductees experiencers you know and we all we all got together but i was um uh on the phone with her with yes it's all it's all relevant i was on the phone with cynthia and uh, I was like, yeah, this, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to it. I, there's no way I can, you know, because I was up in up near Yosemite. And 
this was down in Palm Springs, you know, like there's no way, I know I'm going to make it. Well, at that moment, a, uh, a praying mantis insect, the actual bug, thing was this big, right? Giant, a, a white one too, started crawling up my leg, right? And I was like, oh, I guess I'm going. I guess I'm going. Okay, cool. So I go, and that's when I met um, Barbara Lamb, right? And uh, Barbara Lamb and I became really good friends. Uh, you know, we did the, in uh, this group, this group like hung out together for, we're, uh, some of us, is, um, most have passed away, a couple have passed away, unfortunately, after Cynthia passed away it's kind of like uh, uh the gang kind of kind of broke up and everybody went their separate ways but it's because of that that's that's how I got into it you know because um uh, it was mostly from from meeting Barbara at that at that uh, thing we we all did just just hanging out and it's an amazing experience when when uh if if you are you know that's my advice to people if you're a um experiencer there's nothing like being around other experiencers nothing like it you know it's the greatest thing in the world i mean gosh it's like it's like candy you know it's, oh, i love it it's, it's addict it's addicting and um yeah barbara we've just been barbara lamb and i have just been on adventure after adventure after adventure after adventure so that's how i got into the uh, you know, meeting the ancient alien people is because it's just like uh, I didn't. I guess I had. I don't never really put any energy out to in there. It's just like, hey, Rob, you want to do this? Yes, just do it. Fine, that's cool. So uh, yeah, it, but you know, the, and the more I did, the more the more discouraged I kind of got in with the whole thing a little bit. You know, because it's kind of like you know, um, even like the ancient alien producers, it's like oh. You know, it's it's a show it's for it's for entertainment you know everything's kind of that's the way it, it is it's like this whole this whole field unfortunately is like uh um entertainment you know and i, I did notice that i won't mention any, any names but uh when i was you know terrified and i was like what's going to happen to me there was no one like no one would get back with me like i'm I'm going to all the big names and I'm sending them emails and I'm like, please help me. What's happening? I got no reply back. It was, Cynthia was the first one to reply to me. And, um, and I, so eventually when I started to meet people, you know, and, and getting involved, not with so much of the group that I was in, but uh, getting involved with other groups too. And I, it's like, every time I get into a group, I'd be like, here we go. I'm finally going to meet people that know what's going on. And uh, uh, these are these are advanced human beings. Their you know their energy is great. And I go there, and it's like e ego city, and it's like the groups always fall apart because of you know he said she said uh, high school uh, things, you know. And it's like so I keep getting more and more discouraged. I'm like I, I was hopeful going into it. And I kind of like became a little bitter coming out of it, you know, and that's because it's just like I said, you know, my intention was to like try to try to help people. And it just became more of a like, yeah, felt like to me more of like an entertainment uh, type thing. You know? Yeah, like, but it's only real, like everyone's great. They all have great personalities and I love everybody, you know, that I've ever met. But, you know, it's just kind of like, uh, there's there's other names that I, I haven't met that are are out there that are just like uh, destroying the credibility of the yeah. of the phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, the producers are controlling the narrative, you know. So it's a business, you know. They want to make they want they want to make money, and they need to make money because it costs a lot of money. Yeah. But you know, the producers that have a narrative. And or, or let's not call it a narrative. Let's say they have a story they want to tell. So you're kind of like, uh, like, like with um, uh, extraordinary. Um, it's almost kind of like I don't really fit into the story too well. But it was because that um, my story was so hardcore that it had to it had to go in. Yeah. 
yeah. kind of deal, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going in it. I'm not a part, like I said, I'm not a part of the Dr. Jacobs no. crowd. I'm on the other side of it. I'm on the Barbara Lamb side that doesn't really get uh, people. And that's the other thing I noticed too, is that people love monsters. It's almost like humanity wants to be scared, yeah. you know, and granted, like I said, there's bad things out there. And I'm sure that there is, you know, the gray agenda to making these other hybrids. And I know that it's real, but in reality, you know, we got to worry about is putting a roof over our head more than, more than them. They're, they're not, they're not, uh, yeah, they're not a danger to us at all. Even the, even the negative ones still not, not a danger. How about the, the military? Did you ever get harassed by them? never been harassed by the military that's where i have my rule don't don't talk about the military <laughs> but, uh, what's the first rule in fight club yeah <laughs> so do you have any like other story you might want to share with uh, everyone before we uh... <sighs> trying to think you know um no, not, not that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, God, there's so many. It's so many. It's hard to trigger without without uh, uh, questioning. But, you know, keep if you keep your eyes to the sky and you keep going out there, you, you're going to see something. You're going to see something, you know, it, 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 just anybody. First, first things first, you just got to believe. That's the first thing. You got to believe it's real because it seems like it irritates them a little bit. When If, if you go out there with the – people go out there with the attitude – oh i'm out here prove yourself to me that it seems to piss them off a little bit like this it's like offensive you know and so if you go out there and you're like with an open mind that you're real and you're like hey you know can i see something you know and you have to remember you know uh they, they don't use radio waves they don't use microwaves they don't use light beams or to communicate like we think we do um it's all it's all here it's all thought and and it's all mind and heart yeah. you know to to connect with these things and if you start applying your your mind and heart to to reaching out to things outside of this uh paradigm then they'll reach back yeah and it's pretty amazing yeah it, and you get some amazing things happening too yeah like i mean trying to think of something super cool like you know you look up into a cloud and you just see a cloud just start morphing into like letters you know like making right angles and and then you look and you see the little bright light up in the up in the sky and the, the ship is manipulating the cloud to say hi you know so you get to see cool stuff like that wow. and then of course you then uh you start here then you'll hear the jets coming in there goes the the ship takes off and the jets go after it you know <laughs> I got this straight, this really quick story. You were talking about UFOs or you saw, you know, lights in the sky. I did a CF5 like a few years ago at my dad's. He moved to another town. And uh, so uh, I was about to, he has a, like a, a, camp, a trailer, uh, at, you know, like a camping trailer at the back of the yard. And uh, I was about to sleep in that, uh, you know, during that night. And uh, I started doing it like a quick CF5 and uh, a light moves overhead and starts to, gives me like a huge flash so i go into the uh on my computer and see if it's the uh the international space station oh and yeah it was you know you really have to check it you know if yeah. it comes over your, your 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 town yeah but looking at the, the time there might have been like a 20 minute difference so i said okay it might have been that might be not so i go to bed and during the night so i'm sleeping on my back and i feel two hands grab my head and do this oh yeah and i yeah. i, I I felt it. It's like you, someone took my head and looked at me like that and put me on the bed again. But uh, the thing is right beside my, my dad's right beside like the, the, he has like two neighbors on either side, but behind his house is, uh, there is a cemetery. Oh, shoot. So, so I'm not sure if it could have been an ET or like a ghost looking at me, but, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's like it's almost like a, a reverse CE5. If you ever have a reverse CE5 experience, um, it's a term that we we all use. We call it the we call it the ping, right? When they ping you, oh. and it's it's almost like it's almost like a tap on the shoulder. Hey, 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 Rob, go outside right now. 
you go outside and there's like a ship in the sky you know i've had it i've had uh uh two real quick quickies um uh good friend of mine my boss right uh at the time jeremy because we, we painted together right and uh uh, when I first met him, you know, he didn't really believe anything, right? And I was like, okay, guys, you got to show him something. I was like, you got to show him something. Yes, you know, nothing, nothing. I'm like, come on, please, please, please. So well, one, one night, uh, you know, we're driving, we're driving home. And we're kind of near the coast and you get the fog, you know, pretty low fog. And you see this little light going, going up out of the fog and then back into it going out of the fog oh, no. and back into it the orange light right and it was like the voice saying all right tonight's his night and I, he was like oh did you see that and i was like yeah yeah man you're gonna get some more later man so when we got we get it we get to my house we're carpooling right i get out i get out of the car and he gets out and i get the the same the ping you know the same kind of like the head you know look look this look here you know, so I look there and there's like, you know, the little satellite in the sky and then it stops, you know, it's just sitting there hovering in the sky. I'm like, bro, there it is, man. And he looks and he's all, it starts moving. And then like, here come a couple more, you know, and he's like, oh my God, oh my God. He's holding my hand, you know, you know, like a full blown inner, inner lock. Like, this, this is so beautiful. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's like oh how come how come you know you're not a uh, uh, freaking out right now man and he, i'm like dude i see this like every day man he's like every day and uh you know another time was at a campfire and we're all you know hanging out at the campfire with some friends and i get i get called uh, with to my wife who's smoking away from the fire and it's like a you know hey hey you know look look up and i look up and there's a flash of light right and it goes, call your call your buddy uh, over. I'm like, hey, should I come, should I come over? Check this out, man. And uh, they're like, don't look at the sky and just point randomly into the sky. I'm like, dude, right there. And he's all, oh shit, and right there. The, the thing, the, the crap lit up and shot off into space. So, yeah, yeah they 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 do that. They'll they'll be like, there, look there. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Totally cool. cool. Super cool. Super cool. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, we could always call it a day. We've been at this for uh, like over an hour, maybe two. Wow. A bit. <laughs> a bit. We probably go. We probably go for another like I don't know, the eight and a half hours. You know. Yeah. Barely scratch the skirt surface. Uh, like. Well, it's so fun uh, talking to you. Yeah. You've got a really a good story, an amazing. Life. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a ride, man. It's been a crazy ride, and I've just been holding on. And the and the you know the worst part is, the absolute worst part about this for me is is I still have to function in 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 you know I still have to function. It's it's like I constantly feel like I'm I'm just like. You know, in the movie scenes when like uh, the characters not not moving at all, but the camera's like spinning around real fast and everything's moving around so fast. That's how I feel. That's how I feel like everywhere I go. It's just like I'm not a. I feel like I'm not a part of it anymore. Like I'm not attached, and it gets really lonely and really hard to function. <laughs> so yeah, when when we get to do things like this, it's like oh man we get to uh talk and and get get all this stuff out that we're normally we're just like you can't you can't say this you can't just say this to people you know, I mean, I know i've made them. enemies because of it so i've lost family i've lost family i've lost friends and you know it's it's um it's, ugh. i know the i guess the the whole idea of a new earth is uh, somewhat appealing right now totally right yeah. you ever get that feeling where it's like um Ah, you just don't want to be a part of it anymore. It's like I just don't want to be a part of this anymore. Like, not not like the UFO thing. I'm like, just I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Yeah, I don't want to do. Stop it. Stop playing the to, game and uh, move yeah. On, you know? I want to like 
go talk to the animals and and build a community hug a tree hug a tree yeah or just go we just go out we build a community and we you know live in balance with nature and and in balance with each other and we just we just build shit to make our lives cooler i don't i don't it's like now i just don't understand why everyone's the way they are you know it's so the answer is so simple get along yeah there that's so simple <laughs> well thank you so much for coming on brother it's yeah thank blast. you yeah uh anytime it was fun thanks a lot so get my, uh get my spirit back into it <laughs> so to those watching uh, today's episode hope you enjoyed it uh more interviews coming up and i'll see you guys next time so take care everyone Hello everyone, this is Mr. Gray and thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee or experiencer and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomenon and the future, remember, truth will out.